Good Saturday, everyone. A quick update on the road today. If you're a normal viewer, you're probably looking at this background, figuring out, uh, yeah, this this is not normal, but I brought the mic with me on the road. I think it's important that you keep updated with what's going on, not just today, but on Sunday as well, because what starts today will kick into Sunday, and we could be looking at a line of strong thunderstorms moving from Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, maybe even to Tennessee, and as far east as the Appalachians. As we move through the day today, most of the storms will hold off until the afternoon. Some indication was that it, they may try to fire up into the mid-afternoon to late afternoon, but most of the models really try to keep the big storms holding off until at least 4 or 5 o'clock, but not a guarantee. Now, the timestamp above is Eastern Time, but look at these storms trying to get going as early as 5 p.m., and then they really start to pick up as we head into the evening hours. So let's just watch the evolution of these storms. Don't get hung up on these too much. Now, you may not be seeing the storms fire up on this particular model run across parts of Oklahoma, and I think there is a lot of question. For example, will these storms here eat into what happens to the north? It's possible into Kansas. Either way, we'll start to see these uh, storms kind of come together as a segment of storms and bow out into parts of Missouri, also Iowa. This could be a damaging wind scenario and a large scale one too with that, and that continues into tomorrow. Now, the threat for tornadoes is high. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys that it is because of a couple of things. First of all, we have the strong upper level jet streak that's moving out of the southwest states. And so in the mid levels, you've got your winds coming in out of the southwest, kind of like that. And then once you get down to the surface, winds here coming out of the south. And we're going to see that low level jet really start to pick up as we head into the afternoon and evening hours across Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. So you've got your southerly component at the surface. At aloft, you've got your winds more westerly. So you've got that wind shear, that change of wind direction with height, which is one of the ingredients. That strong low-level jet starts to bring the moisture north as well. Look at these dew points skyrocketing as we head into the evening hours, into the mid-70s across parts of Oklahoma and Kansas. So that nocturnal tornado threat will continue through the, the evening hours, and I think, again, the severe risk continues overnight. The significant tornado parameter, I don't like to show this that often, but I think it's important to consider that in the environment where these storms will fire, this is off the charts. So... Again, I, not to scare you, but I do want you to be aware that today is the kind of day in these areas you want to be weather aware. Have a way to get those alerts, whether it's NOAA weather radio, uh, cell phone, traditional broadcast. That way you can get the EAS signals that come out. Just stay alert today. That's just what I'm going to say and have a plan in case you do get a warning that comes out. So again, here's your significant threat areas. This is from the Storm Prediction Center and you can see that threat really pushes all the way down into Texas. There's some question I think as to how far south does this line, at least the significant line form. But confidence is strong once you get up into Oklahoma. Again, Oklahoma City now in this area of concern and it goes all the way north into Kansas and I think even further north into parts of Nebraska. Missouri, also even into Iowa. This is a significant severe threat for tornadoes. It almost looks like a tornado, doesn't it? Quite ominous, but that hashed area here from Kansas down into Oklahoma, into Texas, gives you an idea of the confidence that's growing from the Storm Prediction Center. And the hail could be absolutely huge, especially with the amount of instability that's going to be developing this afternoon. And tomorrow, that threat shifts off to the east. So now let's take a look at this. This is for Sunday, Indianapolis, under that area of enhanced risk for thunderstorms. And I think heading into tomorrow, the problem will be strong, damaging winds. We may end up seeing these winds stretch all the way into eastern Kentucky once it's all said and done into tomorrow night and then early Monday morning. Now, at this point, the main threat appears to be damaging winds, but as you can see, a chance of some tornadoes, too, embedded in those clusters of storms as they move off to the east. Not quite like today where we're seeing those supercells that really just blow up and with all of that helicity and spin in the atmosphere just producing major tornadoes. And it could be, again, a major tornado outbreak with the ones that are happening today, Saturday. Here's the future radar in these areas. Now, today, Saturday, we do have the risk of some strong storms up around the Great Lakes. Some of these could get a little strong, especially into parts of western New York and in and around the Great Lakes, too, into Pennsylvania, and also into southern parts of Ontario, too, as we move into the afternoon. And eventually, these storms move off to the east. So by the 6, 7, 8 o'clock time frame, we're looking at places like central New York, down into central PA, and potentially even northern parts of West Virginia. And there'll also be some showers and storms that try to get going here across the south, too. But the strongest risk in the east for storms on Saturday will be here, also, again, across the south, 
with some of those pop-up storms this afternoon. Let's continue because now we're looking at the storms moving into the picture here across Missouri, also Illinois, north into Wisconsin. Some of those storms here could also be strong. And even during the morning hours, we could be dealing with uh, some storms that could not just be driven by the afternoon, but look at this. This is 9 a.m. Central Time. We've got a decent cluster of storms here from Wisconsin down into Illinois, into Missouri, now pushing into parts of western Kentucky. And don't get too hung up on the time with this because it could be a little quicker. It could be a little slower. There are so many components. We're forecasting thunderstorms that haven't formed yet in an environment that will be impacted by storms that haven't formed yet. You'll have outflow boundaries that affect these storms. Either way, all the guidance here is pointing toward a cluster of storms that push off to the east. Again, that's why the Storm Prediction Center has picked up that risk area, uh, that enhanced area across Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee. As we move into tomorrow evening, these storms now pushing into Kentucky, down into Tennessee. And I think this is interesting to watch. Do we see another line of storms that try to form back here on the uh, on the west side of this first line of storms? I don't know. And I don't know how strong they will be. But some of the models, this is the HRRR trying to show that. Now, another thing to keep in mind, these storms will be in an environment with a lot of moisture to work with. So we could see some flooding in some areas. And as we move into Monday, that threat shifts off to the east. Not as strong as Sunday, but still a decent threat for some strong storms, even into the nation's capital, into PA, Maryland, southern New Jersey. And then all across the south, we could see some stronger storms too. But the threat, at least the highest threat on uh, Monday would be here in the mid-Atlantic states. Now, let's talk about what happens after this moves through. There's your system on Sunday moving into uh, southeast Canada. It's going to kick out pretty quickly. And then our winds turn out of the northwest here across the east. We do see some ridging starting to build here across the west. So some warmer temperatures start to build in. Cool across the Pacific northwest. Some rain and, yes, even some snow showers in the higher elevations. It's going to stay cool in the east, too. And then potentially another storm tries to move off to the east as we head into early next weekend. We'll look at that in just a second. But here's that cool air across the east. There's your ridge building across the central United States. This trough here that starts to move in, say, by Thursday and Friday, is this another severe weather event? Still too early, I think, at this point, but it bears watching. And speaking of cool temperatures, I was trying to find the coolest morning for pretty much everyone that's going to be impacted by the cool temperatures. Wow. We may drop into the 30s into the UP of Michigan. I don't know, maybe even some of the colder valleys into New England. Either way, chilly. We're waking up to 40s here uh, and some 30s on May 30th. Not unheard of, but definitely cool and crisp as we start to end the month. All right, guys, that's all I got for now. Stay weather aware today. Weather.gov is where you need to go to get any watches, and those will likely start to roll out as we head into the afternoon. And I'm on X as well. I will try to keep you guys updated as possible. I'm on the road. Be safe, and I will see you next time.